Hey, what's up guys, Ruff here. So the Gamergate situation roars on and today we have some more game journalists to laugh at because there's been another round of articles that are absolute knee slappers. And like a lot of the other articles we've covered, this is once again about Stellar Blade because Stellar Blade, whether it's Twitter users or game journalists has been the target of virtue signaling because people are outraged mainly over the design of the main protagonist of this franchise, Eve. Now, of course, there's been a lot of comparisons between Eve from Stellar Blade and Tubi from Nier Automata, and a lot of people have been trying to attack Stellar Blade in comparison. We've seen viral tweets like this saying, was Nier Automata's release like this, where everyone was like, huh, take that, nerds, this one is for the straights. I feel like most people were chill and just played the game, which was both sexy and fun and cleverly written, which was not the case. People were being called incels and attacked for enjoying 2B's design way back when Nier initially released, and that is something people are trying to rewrite. We've also seen people call this soulless gooner bait when it is compared to Nier and Bayonetta. And of course, all this is extremely ironic if you know the relationship between the creators of Stellar Blade and Nier, and that has been once again reinforced by this article, where you can see the title here saying, Nier Autonoma director Yoko Taro says he thinks Stellar Blade is much better than his game, but Stellar Blade's director says he feels Autonoma is superior. Very wholesome stuff, and you can see, uh, there's definitely going to be some collabs between these franchises, and the creators are clearly very respectful of one another, get along very well, and respect each other's products very highly, despite whatever Twitter is trying to say. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the video, we're going to be looking at an article today that is absolutely hilarious. You can see the now, as I mentioned earlier in this video, we're going to be looking at an article about Stellar Blade that is a knee slapper. So you can see the headline here. It speaks for itself. It says, What's behind the controversy around the upcoming PlayStation 5 exclusive Stellar Blade? Izzy von der Velde dives into the game's sex appeal, orientalism, and whether it panders to the male gaze. That's a lot of buzzwords, by the way. But a lot of people are talking about this article right now, mainly making fun of its outrageous claims. And before we get into this absolute slop, I want to give you guys a palate cleanser. Something that you can enjoy. A delicious couple of meals, perhaps, thanks to the sponsor of today's video. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, the Giga Chads at HelloFresh have returned to sponsor this video. Click the link in the description or use my code and get 10 free meals plus free dessert for life while subscription is active. Now, what is HelloFresh? It's America's number one meal kit featuring a large selection of meal options for you to enjoy without the hassle of shopping at the grocery store. Look, you're busy. You have anime girls to simp over, game journalists to laugh at, and so on and so forth. You don't have time to go out to the grocery store or time to figure out complicated recipes. The solution to this problem is, of course, HelloFresh. HelloFresh makes your life easy by bringing fresh ingredients to your doorstep, coupled with their easy-to-follow recipes that will have Gordon Ramsay looking like an amateur unworthy of your cooking skills. I also love HelloFresh because they offer not only delicious meal options, but also high-protein and diet-conscious meal options for people like me who want to maximize their gains at the gym. Thanks again to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. Click the link in the description or use my code and get 10 free meals plus free dessert for life while subscription is active. Welcome back, guys. So here's the article titled Stellar Blade and the Male Gaze. And it asks the question, attractive to who? Now feel free to give your answer to that in the comments section. But let's start this article. It goes... Stellar Blade, the upcoming sci-fi action RPG from Korean studio Shift Up, has been thrust into the center of video game culture wars that seem as old as gaming itself. The fight can be seen most clearly of late in the vocal pushback against narrative consulting company Sweet Baby Inc. for pushing to have more diverse female characters. A select few Steam and Twitter users are now up in arms. Now, these vocal few are praising the buxom and bouncy protagonist of Stellar Blade, Eve, they say evokes a time they miss when women in games used to be titillating and attractive. She caters to the so-called male gaze. Now you can see what they're saying here. This is a strategy they do throughout this article where they try to say, gamers hate X, but like X sometimes because of reason Y. And that's what they're doing with female characters. They're trying to claim that gamers hate female characters, but like Stellar Blade, 
because of the male gaze. It's an outrageous claim, and it's just as outrageous as the way they frame the Sweet Baby Inc. controversy. They say that the only reason people are mad at Sweet Baby Inc. is for pushing for more diverse female characters, which is not what they're doing. They're injecting an entire woke agenda into games that is clearly lowering the quality of these games as they crash and burn in sales and a lot of people have created and follow these curation lists to avoid bad products with forced agenda in them clearly people are okay with female characters being in games stellar blade for example but people don't want to deal with the nonsense that comes with sweet baby inc and their employees much like the employee who started this entire situation with the harassment campaign they launched against Cabrutus for making the curation list. This behavior also told people to avoid Sweet Baby Inc. because who would want to buy a product or trust a product that was touched upon by someone who has such a disdain for gamers? That's why those curation lists exist in the first place. But continuing on, they talk about the male gaze. So they get a little historical here saying, an academic term coined by the film theorist Laura Mulvey in 1973, the male gaze is often portrayed as seeing a scantily clad woman on screen being bad. Now, it's kind of a mistake to get into this historical definition because this definition right here, it's kind of confusing when it's applied to Eve from Stellar Blade. You know, if you, you take the language of it and really it's strange towards any female video game character, but... They continue on down here saying developer shift up appears to be leaning into the male gaze heavily on its Twitter account and in interviews. It has been sure to draw close attention to the fact that Eve's body is taken from scans of a Korean model. And this is the justified choice of a body model. And they claim we wanted to come up with the most attractive looking body for the user. PlayStation's promotional material has backed this up with Instagram trailers focusing on revealing outfits. On the revealing outfits, players can dress Eve up in. Shift Up did not return a request for comment. I can't believe Shift Up did not return your request for comment. I cannot believe they would turn down game journalists trying to slander and attack their products. But anyways, we see this whole focus on the male gaze. And yes, the main protagonist was made from a 3D scan of a Korean model. We know this, and a lot of people appreciate this. And we also know that the Stellar Blade devs have been leaning into the fan service aspect of this game. And I ask you in response, what is the issue? How is this hurting women? We've seen some IGN authors try to claim this is literally killing women as a result of you know, attractive characters like this existing, but I really want to know how this is hurting women, especially when women are enjoying this design and this game as much as men are. Now, going forward, it says this, Denny points out that this is textbook male gaze attractive to who, asked Denny? To what gender, what sexuality, what nationality? A lot in that choice is, a, is assuming a lot of things about who the developers think the player is going to be. Now, they asked this at the beginning of the article, and of course, in true clickbait fashion, they wait until the end of the article to answer this, so let's skip ahead and get their answer. The truth is, a lot of people, men, women, non-binary, straight, queer, find Eve attractive. Wow, who would have thought? Ladies and gentlemen, yes, everyone enjoys Eve. That is not a shock to anyone who is not a game journalist. However, they want to spin this to somehow still attack men who enjoy this character, so they say... However, the way Stellar Blade is being marketed is drawing in the new Gamergate 2 crowd and Eve is being used as a cudgel by which to bash other feminist protagonists and even women journalists like Kotaku's Alyssa Mercante, Merchant, Mercantilism. We still don't know how to pronounce her name. It's fine. But anyways, this idea that now people are bashing female protagonists in games proof nobody's going around and bashing Tubi or bayonetta or samus or these other characters nobody's doing that they're making this up and then they're once again reinforcing this deflection of criticism being directed at kotaku's editor here Alyssa. they're just dismissing it as oh they hate her because she's a woman no they're criticizing her because of her outlandish comments on social media her routine 
attacks on people based on the color of their skin, advocation for violence against people based on the color of their skin, and also her proud celebration of being ageist towards groups of people that she doesn't like. And that goes only at the surface there's much more to criticize her for, but these are the main things that people are most angry about when it comes to her. So at this point, deflecting it as just her being a woman is a cop-out. But moving forward, they say this. While Eve's body was made from a scan of Shin's, uh, her face was made in-house, and Shin wasn't used for motion capture. They didn't choose an athlete or a martial artist or even an actor, said Denny. You don't want her as a performer, you just want her from the neck down. It seems to be a, uh, very much a statement of the parts of this woman that are of value. Now, the only people denigrating this woman's value to simply the neck down seems to be game journalists. Those are the only people who are being very weird about this entire thing. And also, again, what's the big deal with this scan? And the face being different is something that Western developers have been apparently struggling with. So you're gonna criticize them for making the face slightly different than the real person it's based on. And a week ago, we saw people criticizing the main protagonist of the upcoming Star Wars game for not looking anything like the woman she was based on. And we saw people in the Western game development sphere come out and defend this design, saying, too long didn't read here, that this face is hard to do because scanning face and translating them to the games is extremely hard and nobody can really figure it out. So basically, is this developer a liar according to these, these new claims in this article? Are they lying about this? Well, of course, this person's also very weird, by the way. Uh, so when people said this, he's right, you know, you wrote all that and there's no Eastern developers that do this. And they replied saying, yeah, we can go into fetishization of plastic, reductive, and hypersexualization of pixels after I'm done cleaning my bathroom from all the diarrhea I had today. Yes, once again, the, uh, the normal people in the gaming industry. But it gets worse. When someone said this, I'm going to laugh so hard when you lose your job. He replied saying, I have too many friends for that and can give amazing head. So what they're saying is no matter how much I mess up at my job, I will not lose out of my job in the gaming industry because I have a lot of friends protecting me and also if there's an issue I can perform sexual acts to keep my job in the gaming industry. Do you see why people are very critical of individuals like this from the gaming industry? It's really really disturbing honestly. But moving forward in the article it says this, the lack of performance attached to Eve's body has already been noted by internet culture writer Jita Jackson. Eve doesn't seem to have any reaction to her own sexiness. There's no knowing, no knowing facial expressions, no flipping of her long ponytail, which players can shorten in the options menu. She has no idle animation except when she's on a ladder. She just stands there. She's sexy but doesn't know it. She's athletic and acrobatic but entirely controllable. If she did know, if she could move for herself, it would shatter the illusion of many many of the gamers championing her because she has the agency to be able to reject them rather than simply be controlled by them. I don't really have a rebuttal to this. I'm just going to ask a question. Is this person okay? This is a video game character. And you're talking about autonomy and whether Eve would think for herself or not. Or how she would feel about things. She doesn't think or feel. She's not real. This is a very, 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 very far reach to claim that this character not having the idle animations you like is somehow the controlling desires of men because they want to have female characters with no agency. It's a very strange claim. But moving forward, they go on to say, you could think of Eve as the culmination of a long line of characters constructed by the male gaze, explicitly or not. From Lara Croft to the various concubines Kratos beds in the original God of War trilogies, sex minigames, plenty of women in video games are designed to be ogled. So yeah, this is uh, very interesting because they bring up God of War. And we know why those sorts of things have been uh, nixed in the recent games because uh, lo and behold, God of War Ragnarok 
A Sweet Baby Ink Project. Oh man, I wonder why those things are changing, huh? They came in and they took care of that, that ogling, huh, in that game. But all these claims about the male gaze is pretty much instantly defeated if you just bring up the fact that this is the team at Stellar Blade where there are plenty of females working on the team, including on the art team that designed the main protagonist in the first place. But, you know, if you're going to have one desperate claim, you might as well add in another one. And this is the Orientalism claim that this article is making. So it says, There's also a peculiar type of Orientalism surrounding Stellar Blade. Some are holding up Stellar Blade as an antidote to woke Western games, and many people commented they'd be purchasing a Japanese version of Stellar Blade to secure access to the region-exclusive Japanese dub, despite it being a Korean game with a Korean dub. Is it because that's difficult to get a hold of, so you're a bigger gamer or fan if you can demonstrate that you've gone the extra length to get that version? Is it because there's a particular respect for Japanese voice cast? That might be part of these generous readings, or is it because actually Korean femininity doesn't have the connotations for Western colonial imagination that Japanese femininity does? It's almost like in order to fulfill the fantasy of puppeteering this attractive woman and putting her in certain outfits and placing the camera just right, she needs to be Japanese. Holy moly, what a fanfic that is. So, first of all, if someone wants to buy this with the Japanese dub, I don't really understand what the problem is in the first place. That, that seems like a reach to think that's a problem. But this section right here is so unhinged. If you think someone is operating on Orientalism, they would just buy the Korean version. What do you mean? Now we're like power scaling these Asian cultures in terms of how much Orientalism is being attached to them by people in the West? It's so strange, and you have to go to these crazy lengths to try to make these claims, and it's real. it's just, like, I don't know what to say sometimes. These, like, it's crazy. Uh, on the one hand, Stellar Blade is going to kill women. On the other hand, it's promoting uh, the male gaze. On the other hand, it's promoting Orientalism. Like, what else is it going to do? Is it poisoning our food supply? Like, what else can you possibly claim about this game that just has an attractive female lead? Well, they continue on to say this. Statistics show this isn't true. As of 2023, about 50% uh, of people who play games are women. Shift up assuming an audience of men and leaning into the male gaze so explicitly is, in essence, a marketing move that purposefully others a huge number of potential players, which is very odd. If the producers want to create video games that are only intended for male audiences, it's really unwise because they are alienating a huge demographic. Here's the crazy thing. They admitted in the same article that all types of people enjoy Eve from Stellar Blade. So what are they yapping about here? And also targeting 50% of the market, even if this claim is true, that's a pretty big part of the market. And again, this is once again trying to claim that women could not enjoy this character. Trust me, when it comes to the male gaze of Eve, a lot of women are gazing at this character too. They like it too. It is so mind-blowing to these journalists that women enjoy these designs too. But that's something that's been common among game journals for a long time now. But here's the end of the article. It says, Denny thinks game companies could stand to expand their horizons when it comes to attraction Rather than just catering to the male gaze and creating hourglass figures and jiggly bits, why not consider the muscle mommies, the dad bods, disabled people? Greater representation in body types doesn't have to mean less attractive. Yeah, guys, Stellar Blade is really wrong in appealing to the male gaze by focusing on having an attractive body on its main protagonist. So let's solve that by having some more muscle mommies. Do you hear yourself? These people, it's not even like they're, they're making it easy. They are literally bringing out the tee, putting the ball on the tee, handing you the bat and saying, okay, go ahead and square up on this one. It's so ridiculous. There's zero self-awareness whatsoever. And anyways, like if you liked any of these, like the muscle mommy, for example, people on Twitter would still say you're an incel for liking that character. We all know how that operates. But of course, the only people supporting this article are, of course, other members of the industry like Khalif here, who we've seen a couple of times on this channel. He is a L factory when it comes to his takes. 
Recently, he defended the localization thread made by Capcom, which everyone had a, pro uh, had a problem with, except for him, of course, where people said unironically supporting censorship, where he claims willful censorship isn't a thing. Responding to a thread that is entirely about willful censorship of products for a global audience. But anyways, this article was an absolute stinker and a lot of people are clowning on it and for good reason. And as always, longer video here. I appreciate you guys hanging in there and listening and feel free to share your thoughts about today's topics in the comment section down below. Hope you guys enjoy the video and I'll see you next time.